All right, good morning. Um, the successful performance of brick tennis nephrotomy uh, requires uh, formation of a good stone track. Uh, there's a few methods to, pr to achieve this. Uh, most commonly used nowadays is the balloon uh, track dilatation. Uh, however, in Vancouver here, we've uh, reintroduced an older method of track formation in the form of uh, metal telescopic dilatation. Uh, the objectives of this study were to assess the feasibility and safety of metal telescopic stone track dilatation and possibly to uh, generate uh, data for a future randomized study comparing this uh, against other forms of stone track formation. The PL situation here in Vancouver uh, is characterized by a long waiting list uh, and a fixed budget with a need to reduce disposable costs. Uh, the advantages of metal telescopic dilatation is uh, the cost savings of about $300 per case. However, metal dilators have seldom been used uh, recently across North America as there has been a perceived uh, increased bleeding risk with, the, with this form of dilatation. Uh, we performed a prospective uh, review of a single surgeon experience with PNL. Uh, we had 81 patients undergoing unilateral PNL with metal telescopic dilatation. Uh, primary outcomes of interest included uh, the time to form the track, any post-operative bleeding complications, looking specifically at uh, the change in hemoglobin on post-operative day one, uh, the rate of transfusion, and any other vascular comp complications. And then we also looked at uh, stone outcomes. Uh, these numbers summarize uh, our patient population. They had a mean age of 55. Uh, slightly over half were male, uh, and the mean uh, anesthetic score of 2.7. Looking at uh, the stones themselves, uh, the, ma the stone burden as uh, measured by maximum stone diameter on uh, CTKV preoperatively was uh, 31 millimeters. Uh, most stones were composed of calcium. Most of those were calcium oxalate, uh, dihydrate or monohydrate and uh, there were uh, a few struvite uric acid and cysteine stones as well. Of the stone tracks, uh, 77 were uh, single tracks, whereas uh, four patients required multiple tracks. Uh, these were usually only two tracks. Uh, the vast majority of tracks were formed in the lower pole of the system, and uh, the time to track formation was uh, a median of three minutes with a range up to five minutes. Uh, anatomic considerations in some of the patients included calcial diverticuli, horseshoe kidneys, uh, bifid renal pelvis, and the solitary kidney. Looking at uh, uh, bleeding uh, complications, uh, we found that a mean, uh, median hemoglobin drop on the first pulse of day of 18 uh, only one out of the 81 patients required transfusion postoperatively. Uh, one patient did develop uh, an uh, arterial calcial fistula. This was detected about three weeks postoperatively, and uh, he was required to come back for angioembolization. We, uh, we uh, did a statistical analysis looking uh, at the drop in hemoglobin as it related to various uh, stone and tract factors and didn't find any significant relationships there. Uh, in terms of uh, stone outcomes, uh, we had a overall stone free rate as defined by no residual stone fragments at all on post-operative CTKUB of 83%. Uh, success rate was defined as any residual fragments less than 4 millimeters. These were felt to be clinically insignificant and uh, with a high probability of passing spontaneously of 90%. 10% uh, of patients required secondary procedures. Uh, four uh, patients required secondary PNL, uh, and one required uh, P secondary PNL combined with uh, shockwave lithotripsy. So, in conclusion, we found that stone track dilatation with metal telescopic dilators to be effective and safe, with a track dilatation time of three minutes, transfusion rate of one percent, and a stone free rate of eighty-five percent. Uh, these provide the substantial cost savings, which is quite beneficial in our environment here, and it, it has allowed uh, the expansion of the PML program here at BGH.